very good morning. Welcome to New Jersey Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosado. Today we bring you the New Jersey Clean Communities Council, which is helping us clean up our waterways in our communities by dealing with litter and pollution. We'll also have with And welcome back to New Jersey Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosato. New Jersey Clean Communities Council was established in 1986 to help change the attitudes that cause littering. In over 25 years of cleanup, volunteers worldwide have collected enough cups, plates, forks, knives, and spoons to host a picnic for two million people. Please join me in welcoming Sandy Hubert, the executive director of the New Jersey Clean Communities Council. Good to have you here. Thank you. Now, your organization, NJCCC, was uh, functions as a nonprofit corporation under the environmental uh, agency? Yeah, we are actually in but none of of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. We are under contract, the New Jersey Clean Communities Council, to oversee um, grants and litter bait abatement programs in, in towns and, and counties statewide. So 559 municipalities and 21 counties, all implementing litter abatement programs. But you are a separate not-for-profit corporation. You're not employees of the state per se. You're subcontracted no, no. by. That's correct. Okay, which is which is nice because this way you handle all the details that sometimes government officials accidentally it's let nice, slip through. Works well. That is a good uh, good uh, relationship. Now you oversee. Uh, all the grant disbursement for 559, you said, I'm just looking at the numbers, 559 towns, 21 counties. So that's a lot to deal with. Huge. It's a huge job, but we have uh, coordinators in every single town. We have mayors who are actually really committed to this program, so it's an easy job. And we also have thousands of volunteers working with us as well. Now, you work with folks who do recycling in all the different communities as well? Yeah, Clean Communities goes hand-in-hand hand with recycling. We always say reduce, reuse, recycle, but keep it off the ground. I can remember in my community, I'm a Garden State resident myself, and I can remember in my community when we went to mandatory recycling, everybody mm -hmm. groaned about it. Yep. But now I notice that our recycling bins have twice as much content as our garbage cans. And when you think about Wonderful. how much landfill space mm -hmm. we're, we're saving, just that alone, it's just a remarkable thought. How expensive and, and, and how rare it is to have new, we don't have much new landfill space. So it really helps stretch out the, the space that we Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Yeah, the re mandatory recycling was actually passed in 1987 in New mm -hmm. Jersey, right, right out on the heels of, of the Clean Communities Act. So um, yeah, we, we're very proud of that recycling in New Jersey. We, we have good numbers, and um, it really, for our, from our viewpoint, keeps it off the ground. And in terms of your mission, is there a block grant given, say a chunk from the national or the federal EPA to the state EPA, and then they give grants to the different communities and you have to take uh, this person? No, actually, we are funded by a litter tax. Oh. It's a tax on uh, businesses that may produce litter generating products. And those businesses are actually very happy to pay the tax sure. to keep New Jersey clean. Sure. Makes it, makes it look uh, nicer for folks who want to come visit us yeah. and patronize those businesses. You. Uh, also do uh, provide a service of nationwide information basically helping to remind people uh, to keep things clean. Yeah. Most recently we have been um, asked to take a responsibility for the state adopt a beach program. We're very excited about that. That's also legislated a legislation uh, piece that uh, was passed in uh, about 1992 and it's all about having volunteers out there on the beaches on the coast keeping New Jersey clean. And we're looking at some of the volunteers right there. You, uh, is that also part of International Coastal Cleanup Day, or is that separate? It's part of, of the International Coastal Cleanup. Uh, that's going to take place this year on September 17th. We work with the Ocean Conservancy in Washington, D.C. We're very proud of that because on that day, we join with volunteers all over the world in picking up litter and categorizing litter. Sure. I, I just wish people who were out boating would realize when you throw a can or a cup in the water. It doesn't just sink to the bottom and go away. It floats, it, it dirties the water, it kills fish, and it ends up on a beach for you when you take your family out to the beach. Absolutely. You know, you we ask boaters there. to please, please take it back to shore with you. Absolutely. Don't leave it in the water. And get it recycled. And recycle and it. Go. Absolutely. Now, is how huge a problem is marine de debris at this point? Now, we're seeing more and more uh, litter and trash in the water. Unfortunately, of course, the good news is we're seeing more volunteers out there willing to help clean it up. So there's the good news and the bad news. Uh, and what is the Slam Dunk the Junk campaign? Uh, slam Dunk the Junk is simple. It means put it in the right place. You know, put it in the tra your trash in a litter can, in a recycling container, but keep it off the ground. And a cool interesting thing about this is Slam Dunk the Junk actually started back in April of 2007 in East Orange when a young man then about nine years old 
uttered the phrase, slam dunk the junk, Kwame Payton, uh, and he reminded everybody in East Orange to keep that litter off the ground. And we mm -hmm. adopted that slogan as a, as a statewide slogan. We love Kwame Payton and we, we like to promote him. Would you say that the majority or a grand part of the of the junk that, that's out there right now is uh, glass bottles and plastic bottles? Yeah, I think we're finding, at least in the water, we're seeing a lot of plastics, disposables. Uh, but interesting, cigarette butts, by item count, the Biggest form of litter in New Jersey. Even today? Yep, even today. With all today. the anti-smoking campaigns. And, and 19... they spent $20,000 a pack of cigarettes that people are still throwing. You should, for the amount that those butts cost, you should save them. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> or so don't we smoke ask people all. to, you know, either, um, you know, refrain from smoking in certain areas or just, um, you know, put them in the right place. How about the appliances in our homes? A lot of people you see it's putting amazing. stuff on the curb. Yep. People are not putting them in the right place, and they dump, especially in New Jersey and in uh, wooded areas. Mm -hmm. We find a lot of, of illegal dumping, so it's a huge problem in New Jersey. And most towns have a, an appliance pickup program. You just have they to do. call the you town. Just have, that's exactly right. You so need to call like, and make arrangements. If there's a fee, I think even in my town, it's one of the more expensive towns. I think it's $20 or $25. So, so yeah. you know, and that way it'll get properly recycled as opposed to uh, just dumping it someplace. And yeah. rust coming out of it. What would you like folks to think about when they are uh, disposing of things without any thought? When you see, I just saw yesterday I saw a kid waiting for a bus with a cup in his hand and he took the cup and flung it down and, and it just incensed me I was unfortunately starting to drive and I saw it in my rear view but it <laughs> bothered me so much in that case you wish that kid would hold on to that that can or that bottle or that you know piece of trash and take it to a litter can mm. yeah but what I want people to think about slam dunk the junk there you it's go. simple just don't throw it down and what gives you hope for the future Hope for the future, it's all about education. New Jersey Clean Communities promotes um, reducing litter through education. We have a lot of programs out there for young people and in the schools. And our hope for the future, it's our children, mm -hmm. it's our students. And, and I think we'll have a sustainable future if we um, slam dunk the junk. Yeah, this is, this is where we live. Nobody wants to see junk all over the streets. You know, it's okay if you're gonna, you, you drink out of, a, out of a bottle or plastic bottle, glass bottle, whatever, just put it where it belongs. Not, so. a, not a simple, it's a simple solution to a problem. You bet. Well, I want to thank you so much, Sandy, for being with us today. Again, part of the New, Jer New Jersey Department of Environmental uh, Protection, or at least under uh, them as an independent corporation that yes. you are a nonprofit corporation, the NJCCC. I appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. And for information on all of the organizations featured on Viewpoint, and if you happen to miss a segment and would like to watch the show at your leisure, do visit us at 7online.com slash viewpoint. We'll be right back with the Health and Humanitarian Aid Foundation, also known as HHAF. Please don't go away.